Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on where you're at. Welcome to Racing Dudes Live. It's the first of our many, many weekly show, daily shows we'll have this week, uh, leading up to the Kentucky Oaks and Kentucky Derby with Mike Samich and Aaron Halchman. And uh, guys, it's our first day after the draw. We've had a night to sleep on it. So, of course, we've all got our picks solid. We're ready to go. No questions asked about it. Right, Aaron? Honestly, I feel way, way better coming on this show after di uh, diving deep into this thing, getting the the, the past performances, seeing the post positions. It's kind of overall reanalyzing everything. I'm pretty confident that I've got three or four horses uh, and one of them are going to win. I'm still kind of between a couple as far as uh, picking an actual win, but I, I feel a lot better today than yesterday for sure. Mike, how about you? You feeling a little stronger about your opinions these days? You know... <laughs> This is going to be the least confident I am in my Derby pick in probably the last four years. Yeah, I mean, it, it just feels like that type of race where I can I can carve out a scenario where eight of these horses win, maybe ten, somewhere in that range, um, and, and that makes it a lot more difficult to a say, hey, Forte is a horse you have to bet to win because there are other options that I think are are legitimate, and, and b I still haven't figured out the pace of this sucker. And that, to me, is one of the biggest struggles is you, you go to different varying sources of information and they all project different horses to be on the lead. Um, I've seen Dermaso Tagate. I've seen Verifying. I've seen Reincarnate. I've seen Confidence Game. I have seen Kings Barnes. And it's like there's a huge disagreement over what this pace looks like heading into the first turn. And that's generally how I want to handicap the Derby. And I feel like that is more difficult this year than it has been in years past. Yeah, it's uh, the pace scenario is an interesting one. By the way, uh, I took my first stab at the, if you guys remember, Saratoga Slim used to do the pace thesis for us. Uh, six years he did it for us at RacingDudes.com. Won a major handicapping award for the 2017 edition uh, where he just was spot on about every single thing that happened. He was with 2018 as well when Justify won. Um, so I took my own stab at that. It, it uses Brisnet speed ratings and um, analyzing posts and stuff like that. So you can take a look. That's at RacingDudes.com. It's live right now. Um, I landed on a horse I didn't, I hated, I hated Practical Move, this entire trail. I'm on Practical Move now, because the more I watch his replays and the more I look at the pace setup, I think that he's going to get a great trip, and there's been a knock, uh, Mike, a, a fair knock from you, is that you think he's had three perfect trips his last three races, and I can't argue with that. My counter is, at some point, what point do you stop knocking the horse for getting perfect tricks, and you say, Jackie Ramon Vasquez puts that horse in the perfect position to succeed every single time. He drew post seven, uh, drew post ten uh, outside of almost all of the speed. So I do love that, but uh, lots of opinions about that. And guys, we had a, a fan questions come in. By the way, all through this week, you know, if you guys have questions you want us to answer, send it to contact at racingdudes.com, or you can put it in the chat, the live chat here, and we'll talk about it here. Uh, a fun one uh, uh, from our buddy Shane. What's been your favorite Kentucky Derby so far? I've only been following for a handful of years, so I'll turn it over to Aaron first because I know you're the most experienced. What's been your favorite Kentucky Derby so far? American Pharaohs. Kentucky Derby was my favorite of all time uh, because at the time, and back in 2015, that was the biggest wager I'd ever made on a horse, period, was in the Kentucky Derby. And, uh, you know, we saw that horse come through the Arkansas Derby, through the Rebel. Uh, we had a personal connection with American Pharaohs. So that Derby was my favorite of all time. Uh, biggest cash. Uh, well, uh, we may have cashed more on Justify. I don't remember, but it was a very big cash for us as well that day. And uh, just the fact that we kind of knew, you know, at least we we thought if he would win the Derby, he might win the Triple Crown and in that 37-year drought. And it makes it even more special that he was able to do it. So American Pharaoh for me, 2015. Especially you kind of had that heartache the, the year before with California Chrome, where I think you told me that your, your, I think it was your grandpa just after Chrome didn't win the Belmont, just kind of sat there and was like, are we ever going to see this? It felt like maybe that was the year that it could have done. And that was just the year before Pharaoh. Yeah, and uh, I was actually very happy he lost. I had tonalists that day in the Belmont, so so I, I, I was not sad at all uh, that a California Crone lost. But, yeah, some older people were like, yeah, it's just never going to happen because he did look like a pretty pretty strong horse, but I kept telling people, look, this is Christophe Clement. He's got this tonalist horse, and he's going to win the Belmont. So, uh, Vinny says that his is uh, Animal Kingdom's Derby, which I think was 2011, 2012. I know that was a, a popular one. Uh, it is, you know, two fills is going to see if he can follow the Animal Kingdom route to try and win the Kentucky Derby this year. Mike, what about you? What's been your favorite Kentucky Derby so far? Well, financially, it's the Medina Spirit Derby, which is 
odd and ironic. Um, but that one, that <laughs> one is financially the one that I would pick. However, emotionally, uh, 1989, Sunday Silence, Easy Goer. Uh, that's what really got me going in horse racing when I was, I don't know what, 14 years old, 15 years old when that race happened. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was six years old, not uh, not, not 14 or 15. Uh, but that one is the one that really got me going. And that's the one like I'll pull up that derby. I will pull up that preakness. I'll watch those two races. I, those two horses were I just a cut above everybody else. And it was fun to have those two horses bang heads and really just battle throughout the derby, uh, the whole triple crown sequence. So I'll, I'll go with Sunday Silence and Easy Goer in 89 is my favorite one. And that's the one I probably pull up and watch the most. Yeah, that's uh, I know the one that you uh, reference, and you reference those two horses a lot on the Magic Mike show too. And Sunday Silence, I mean, look look at the influence he has all over this Kentucky Derby from the Japanese side and, and just the Japanese horses in general. Uh, yeah, Samich went full degen at seven. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, me, my started dad, out early. I, my dad and I would go in the pool, and one of us would be Sunday Silence, the other would be Easy Goer, and we'd race <laughs> each other. Like that that was literally like our thing. And so uh, that that race will probably mean more to me. That one in that the Travers uh, in '94. I mean, there's specific races that you just pop into your head as you follow horse racing that got you into it and got you going and made you passionate about the sport. And you know, the '89 Derby is one of those for me. I also love the the 94 concern derby where he didn't win but it was a lot of fun uh so there's ones that just <laughs> pop into your head when you just kind of love the sport and been following it for so long mine's a mine's a sentimental one uh and not for any you know specific reason other than uh two years ago yesterday my son was born on may 1st and then uh, i got to hold him and watch a kentucky derby with medina spirit afterwards so uh, a little bit of a tainted uh legacy in terms of that but i still have that to uh to look back on fondly so that's that's my favorite uh, Kentucky Derby so far. I also have a bottle that is now two years old of bourbon. Uh, that's a, got the the Kentucky Derby bourbon bottle that I'm saving till he's 21. So on his 21st birthday, we're gonna pop that one open. Um, it won't be a Derby day. I've already looked ahead to see what when he turns 21. It's I think it's like a Thursday. It's not a Saturday, so we won't be at the Derby or watching it together on that day. But maybe we can at least open it and then have it ready uh, to get up there. Uh, I've seen Nyquist a lot too. This is the first one I bet on, uh, Nyquist in 2016. Um, it was the first time I had just started following horse racing uh, the fall before that at the Breeders' Cup. And that's when I met Dan Wade, if everybody knows who Wise Dan is from our fantasy league. Uh, Dan's the one who got me into horse racing. And uh, I started looking for people who might know what they were talking about because uh, I love Wise Dan, but his opinions not always super strong because uh not great when it comes to the horse racing but uh fantastic sports better fantastic sports better uh but nyquist won the breeders cup juvenile that year and then i found the racing dudes and you guys aaron you were you really liked nyquist a lot in the kentucky derby and so i was like all right so I made my first kentucky derby bet and it was a winner so i had the beginner's luck on the derby hasn't always gone uh, according to plan since then but at least the nyquist won uh, that was a good one as well. Yeah. Uh, Aaron, do you guys, let's see, I know that Exaggerator won the Preakness. Were you on Nyquist in the Preakness or had you switched to Exaggerator that year? No, we, stick, we stuck with Nyquist in that Preakness. Uh, yeah, and that was, um, that was unfortunately, the Derby was the last time he really ran a, a tremendous race. Although he did run very well in the Preakness, but he just went way too fast, too early. That pace really speeded up, and as we learned, Exaggerator over over that, uh, you know, we're getting that kind of pace, and I, th I believe it rained that day as well. And Exaggerator was such a just a monster on the slop. He just he he murdered him, you know. But uh, yeah, the Derby it, it felt a lot like uh, Forte's year or Forte this year, where Nike was just was good as a two-year-old kept being good as a three-year-old and then was able to get that derby home wasn't wasn't much of a sweat he, he won that one pretty easily uh i kind of have on a similar note here what's been your favorite kentucky derby so far who's the worst kentucky derby <laughs> horse that you've ever backed who's one that you look back on and go man that, that's just gonna hold i have to hold on to this for the rest of my life i can't believe aaron that i supported who yeah, two of them. Uh, Taba last year was just uh, horrific. And uh, 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 gosh, forgot his name. Irish War Cry. Um, the big difference is when Irish War Cry, Cry turned for home, I believe that was 2017. Uh, at, at seven, yeah, 17. It was the year before Justify. Irish War Cry turned for home. I said, I'm, I'm winning this thing. Like, we're winning. He, he looked great. And boy, did he just stop. Uh, and then Taba. You just never, you, I mean, you knew from the start. So that wasn't really a heartbreak like that. But those are the two that's the, easily the worst for me. There's uh, an Irish War Cry is who I would have said too, because I because I followed you guys in 2016. I'm like, all right, we'll run it back. And Irish War Cry from the dreaded 17 post. Um, 
And that was about the best tour. And you even, Aaron, predicted that year that the, this is the year the curse goes down. Uh, if you guys didn't see it on Twitter a couple of days ago, Rajiv Mara, who was the jockey for Irish Warcry, uh, he just he just created a thread where he listed every single uh, derby runner that he's been on and what the, the belief was going in. Uh, he and uh, Graham Motion, they both thought that Irish... I know that... Was Graham Motion the trainer? I can't remember. I know yep. that Rajiv... Ab, yeah, okay. Uh, absolutely believed the Irish war cry was a... a going to win that race and uh you know the plan was to cut him loose and, and send him and then all of a sudden off the break things just didn't work and off the turn he thought he was going to win it still and it didn't work out so go check that out is at Rajiv Mara on Twitter you can check that out Mike who's the worst Kentucky Derby horse that you've backed so far someone mentioned Katie mentioned Magnum Moon in here that was one that I really liked I had future bets on that horse that didn't turn out wonderfully uh Probably the most frustrating. I don't know, like the the worst one, but the most frustrating probably game winner. Uh, I was on yeah, game winner, and that one, I mean, just didn't break and ran wide the whole time, and just a, a brutal trip. And one of those horses that I don't know if was ever actually good enough or not. But that horse was wildly frustrating to be a big fan of. We were on the rail, Magic, for that one. I was yeah, you were. Was that the one you were? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and me and Slim and and Slim and twenty nineteen. Yeah, Slim had Tacitus, and I had a game winner. Uh, yeah, and, and so did Samich. Obviously, he wasn't there, but yeah, we we backed the same horse. And Slim literally threw the program up when they when they broke. They said, "Well, neither one of us are winning this because they yeah. were like seven and eight. <laughs> game back. over, game yeah. over at the break. It's yeah. like you ran fourth or fifth. So it, like didn't ran terribly, but man, it was frustrating because you could also, I mean, hadn't broken perfectly in some other starts, and so it's one of those where you get pretty pissed off. I mean, I, I'm kind of rechanneling Mage here in a way where. <laughs> <laughs> if Mace doesn't break, the program's going to go right in the air. Yeah. So close. Ed Berg says Randy Savage, the wrestler, uh, Macho Man, died. He actually died right after the Derby. But, yeah, it was the same month. It was within a week or two. Um, and Mucho Macho Man was in that Derby, 2011. And Ed Burke, you got off of Animal Kingdom. That's who you got off of that year. That was a tough one. Yeah, Irish War Cry for me, that'd be the worst one that I've backed uh, so far, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how this goes this year, because as I said at the top of the show, practical move is my pick. I locked it in. And uh, for having hated that horse all trail long, uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that turns out. Um, Truth Exposed brings up a good one too. And Aaron, you talked about this in your winning trips for the Derby video that's at youtube.com slash racing dudes about how Palace Malice was a big letdown. They threw blinkers on him, and, and I'll actually, I'll let you explain. What happened with Palace Malice go, from that race? Because he seemed like he'd be good, and then all of a sudden he wasn't. Well, he got terrified in that race, and it's funny. They said it after the race. The jockey was like he was scared to death because they put blinkers on him for that race. He'd never worn them before, so it rained that day. It was very, very sloppy, and uh, you guys, if you've been on the rail and you hear the horses when they come come by you, it's loud. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a beautiful sound, at least for me. But what happened was he got to the lead, he got to the turn and 19 horses, the sound of that. And he couldn't, he, he had no idea where they were. He just took off and he set one of the fastest paces ever in the Kentucky Derby. I'm not sure what it ranks, but it was very fast. And you could tell the moment he got scared because he was sitting there in an okay spot and then he just took off. He got so scared. And like I said, the dirt with the blinkers, he was so, so confused about what it was, the sound that it, it totally ruined his chances. And of course, you know, he went on to have a, a fine career, but that, that certainly, if you backed him that day, you had to be wanting to throw up. I mean, it was, it was bad. You knew he was cooked. Well, and you're muted there, magic. <laughs> Muted? Sorry. I don't even remember. How did I do that? I don't remember clicking on that. That's weird. All right. I'm going to blame it on the allergy meds. <laughs> Make okay, if we do work. crazy things. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, well, what we had asked on the Magic Mike show is if you had anybody anybody out there wanted to give us like a little one to two minute video explaining who you liked for the Derby and why we said we'd go ahead and play it. So this is from uh, Nick Miller was the first one to send this in. Uh, so we'll, Nick's going to tell us who he likes for the Kentucky Derby and why, and then we'll analyze it. Uh, afterwards. For me personally, I'm a big Angel of Empire fan. I think the um, the last couple races, especially Arkansas Derby, that sweeping move he made in the in the turn and then opened up in the stretch, I thought was impressive. I know a lot of talk about who do you face in those races, but in my opinion, I kind of feel the same way. I feel like Tappet Trice um, kind of ran down some fields that end up not being very good down in Florida, especially in the Tampa Bay Derby and in in the Florida Derby. Um, the War Memorial was an absolute dog fight, and I will say that I do like Hit Show because I thought he got parked real wide on the first turn i think he got parked again on the second turn 
And he, he bad. I mean, battle has been in between horses, only lost by a head. And, and, and let's be honest, no one really picked Lord Miles in that race because if they did, he wouldn't be 50 to 1. Um, another horse I kind of like is, is two fills. Um, my only concern there is, you know, he didn't run as good on the dirt as he did on the synthetic and going forward, I, I got to wonder and got to think is, is maybe he more of a turf horse or, or a synthetic specialist. Um, that's kind of interesting to me, but, um, and then I think mage, I don't think we've seen the best of mage. Mage might be a horse that you want to wait on and, and maybe play, down the road, like uh, Mo Donegal last year ran a great race in the Derby, but just got stuck in the one hole, and he was really moving late and ended up winning the the Belmont. And then I think Mage, you know, he might be a Belmont horse, and then going forward, maybe the Travers and, and, and even maybe the Pennsylvania Derby down the road before he goes to the Breeders' Cup. Um, you know, younger, three-year-old, hasn't had a lot of races, but has been competitive and really improving, and Tabit Trice, it took him everything he had to get by him, and he finally did late in that, that Florida Derby. Um, but for me, my top choice, Angel of Empire. I'm hoping to get, I'd love to see 10 to 1, but I would take anything above 8 to 1. I think it would be a great price. And uh, and we go from there. We'll wheel him in Exacta for a buck. And uh, we'll wheel him forward and backwards. Uh, last year, after I didn't wheel the uh, I didn't wheel uh, the horse last year, they ran second in the backwards version. I, I lost on a big try, big Exacta. And then now, uh, since they're doing 50 cent tries, I'll play some tries with a, some horses I like underneath. And... And uh, I'm also going to try to hit the pick six, 20 cent play. So I'm probably going to invest 50 or 60 bucks in that and see what I can do. Thanks, guys. There you go. Thanks, Nick, for sending that in. Uh, yeah, if you want to uh, do one just like that, email us at contact at racingnews.com with your file. So uh, I think he meant, he, he said Florida Derby a couple of times with, with Tappet Trace. I think he meant the bluegrass stakes. But uh, uh, let's talk about Mage, uh, Mike. I know that you like Mage, and, and you maybe don't like that you like Mage, but uh, he brought up an interesting point that I kind of agree with that maybe he's just. Not quite there yet. Like maybe you play him a little bit farther down the summer, but just development wise. But what do you think about Mage so far? Well, it's funny. I feel the same way about Tappet Trice, where I, I think he's a horse that's going to be a lot better in a couple months than he is right now. He, he, I could see the argument for why people would say he can win, but to me, there's still a lot of goofiness in that horse. Mage, I, I kind of feel the same way, but Mage, I think, is a little bit more tactical. And I, I understand it's Mage is tough, okay, because there are a ton of reasons to not like the horse. The braking issue is a huge problem for him. The age is an interesting one because he is a younger three-year-old here. But man, if you watch the two two-turn races, when you go back and you watch all the replays from this and you realize how bad the trip was in his first race going two turns, the fact that he got cut off going down the lane and then re-rallied off of that, the fact that he missed the break in the second one, was hung four wide on the first turn, five wide on the second turn, still hit the lead, there's just so many reasons to kind of gravitate toward the horse, even though I, I had no interest in picking Mage before I started watching all the replays and watch the, and the PPs came out and the post position draw. And, and you kind of you end up moving toward that horse more and more. It's interesting there with the Angel of Empire pick as well, Magic. We both picked Angel of Empire last week. We both are not picking Angel of Empire on Tuesday, right? So uh, that's a, a horse that I think is going to be really interesting from a tote perspective. Um, he mentioned mm -hmm. 8 to 1, hoping to get 10 to 1. It feels like that horse is getting wise guyish a little bit, and that I, I it may be your third choice in the Derby. I thought that Kings Barnes was going to be the third choice. I think it may not be Angel of Empire, so it'll be interesting to see where that lands. To me, the Angel of Empire issue is really how far back he's going to be. The more I analyzed his races, the, the more I felt like he was going to be back five or six horses in this field, and that really concerned me. Uh, question here from Joey Daniels. You're talking about two fills, and, and Nick brought that up as well. He likes two fills. Aaron, we've liked two fills for a bit, and I don't. Th I think with his post draw, it, it, I'm not going to play him probably higher than third right now. But Joey has a great question, and not a dumb question. Joey, uh, is synthetic that much different than dirt? Is it likened to a football player running on turf compared to grass? Aaron, what is what's synthetic like compared to dirt and turf? Oh, really good question. First of all, thanks, Nick, for uh, sending in the video. That was really cool. I, I hope more people do that. That was kind of fun um, to, to see that and, and kind of get a different opinion and kind of see the faces of some of these people that, uh, you know, we see in the chat and, and kind of put uh, put names to faces. Now, back to Joey's question. Uh, it's, it's completely different. Uh, synthetic and turf kind of play similar ish you know it, it's not uh it's a much easier transition let's put it that way so synthetic is basically just a plastic track there's different versions of synthetic uh but it's, it's just a plastic track uh that uh it's an all-weather surface you you know it, it's never sloppy or or fast or whatever it just it's synthetic it is what it is um it, 
horses usually have a tough time going synthetic to dirt. It's usually a transition that uh, is very tough. I can't get into the schematics of why, because I'm not really sure. Uh, <laughs> I've asked trainers, I've asked farriers before, and they kind of just said, look, some some horses just can't grab a hold of certain surfaces um and and that's kind of what it is and so when you look at two fills when you just look at that synthetic race probably the best race i've seen out of anybody Uh, on the trail right it was fantastic but when you go back and you look at those two races on the dirt before that synthetic effort they just leave a lot to be desired as far as, hey, we're going to pick this horse to win the Kentucky Derby, right? Maybe you see those races on the dirt and go, yeah, he can hit the board. He's going to be around. But the synthetic just seemed to really, really move that uh, horse up. The last thing I'll say about uh, two fills, he's trained by Larry Ravelli. And for years, Larry Ravelli won a ton of races at Arlington Park over the synthetic surface. So he knows what a synthetic horse looks like. He knows you know what horses would be really really good for that surface i think that's why he took him to turfway we probably all should have pounded him that day because larry yeah. belly knows how to win over the synthetic so i just have to go by his dirt races and think he is not quite good enough to win with the understanding that if he does reproduce that synthetic race he's probably going to win right so that's where you're at with it um but yeah running uh over that synthetic surface versus the dirt surface is always a big challenge for horses yeah that that effort for two fills was the highest last out buyer one of the top time form numbers in the entire trail i mean everything points toward replicating that puts him right in the mix i will say two fills and hit show two horses i was interested in before the draw who i am less interested in after the draw uh the one and three posts both pretty tough for them hit show absolutely brutal a horse with tactical speed that now is sitting on the rail on the inside not going to be able to make the lead but going to have to be forwardly placed it is just a really really bad spot especially with verifying right outside of you and then uh, two fills kind of feel the same way you're stuck in between confidence game you got king's barn reincarnate more of the speed right to your outside you're going to get crossed over and, and then it's how far back do you end up because of it and so both of those horses i think really lost the post position draw yesterday and kind of fell off my trifecta and possibly even superfected tickets because of it Aaron, at least uh, the difference between two fills and Botanical, who both won the last prep round of preps at Turfway Park on synthetic. With two fills, we've seen him on dirt. He won the street since last year at Churchill in the slop. And I know Larry Ravelli said if it rains Saturday for the dirt, we can get an off track that he's very excited about two fills. Botanical, it's it's been turf and synthetic. And it's <laughs> we're getting a short price on her. And two fills, the horse that has run well on dirt, even fast tracks earlier this year. Where that's the long shot. That, that's the problem with botanical and again it's a brad cox trained horse and where where does brad cox run his really really good horses during the winter going into the spring well you see him at fairgrounds you see him at oaklawn and then when keeneland opens you see him there you don't see him at turfway all that often and it's it's not meaning that botanical is a bad horse i think she's a fantastic horse on that surface that we've seen this is gonna be a big challenge though going to the dirt and again Brad Cox, you would think, would try to win these big Philly races down at Fairgrounds or at Oakland or going up to Keeneland with uh, this horse if he thought she was really going to handle the dirt well. So that's my worry. Am I going to be shocked that she, if she wins? No, because she has a lot of talent. But just being on that synthetic is very questionable to me. And by the way, he had wet paint on synthetic as well, right? Early in the career. One start, yep. And guess what happened? We went to the dirt. Yeah, so that's that's kind of my worry of botanical. I don't want to talk anybody off of her, but at the same time, I'm she's not for me on top on on Friday. I don't love the fact that he debuted her on turf at Kentucky Downs and then went back to turf at Keeneland. To me, that kind of tipped the hand of what he felt she was good at. Right now, the one thing I will say about botanical: there's rain in the forecast for Friday. Huge Tomlinson number on a wet track. Maglador a lot of a blame mare, so she may love if this thing gets wet. Yeah. which may which kind of transitions better over to that synthetic course when it's wet because the the, the hoofs can grab it a little more so i'll be interesting to interested to see if it rains if that upgrades botanical as well because that that i think is a factor that's fair yep 
All great points and, and great questions, guys. Thanks uh, for asking them. Thanks for being so involved in the chat. We're going to get out of here for the day. But again, if you've got questions you want us to answer live, you can either put it in the chat or better yet, send us an email, contact at racingdudes.com. Uh, you can also hit us up on Twitter at racing underscore dudes for Aaron, uh, at samobomb18 for Mike, and at Curtis Kellerwood for myself. Thank you guys so much uh, for joining us. It's been great. We'll be back again tomorrow, Wednesday the 3rd, same time, same place. Make sure you subscribe to youtube.com slash racing dudes so that you don't miss any of our live shows or all the other content we've got coming out you go check out all the other stuff that we talked about as well uh aaron's winning trips for the kentucky derby video is up you should go check that out and then we'll have more throughout the week for aaron haltzman mike stomach the rest of the racing dudes team see you tomorrow everybody